Welcome back, everybody. It's time again for another uh, hour of uh, Comic Art Live. I hope you're enjoying the show. I hope you all had a chance to watch uh, Scott Dunbeer talk to J. Scott Campbell in the first hour. I had a great conversation with Alex Saviak. But uh, now it's uh, time, John Suntress from uh, the Word Balloon Podcast, to welcome David Marquez and Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, it's good to see you guys. Ooh, David Marquez. Um, so, John, John, explain for those uh, people just tuning in, like, what is the whole event? Like, what is the what, what is the state of it? Yeah, I mean, uh, we got the regular Karma Cat Live fans, but for the Word Balloon audience and others, um, this is an online show where uh, we're spotlighting the artists, giving the artists a chance to uh, sell some of their wonderful original pages and commissions and cover art. Uh, David, at the bottom, we've got uh, the scroll of where people can go on your uh, Cadence Comic Art page and uh, purchase some incredible art, and uh, it's it's great. So, yeah, you know, and I thought, uh, I mean, obviously, David, David's been on the show before. Brian's been on the show before. I wanted to get the two of them together to talk about some of their collaborations, but also about what they're currently both doing as well. So, sure. uh, yeah, so uh, let's start off and ask uh, um, how you guys got together, and was Iron Man the first thing that you guys worked on together? No, Miles. Oh, oh of course it was. Shame on me. See, I don't know. What Shame on you. Got my head up my ass. What do you want? All here? right. Yeah, yeah no, we, Brian, uh, you, you go ahead, you go David, ahead. take it, David. I was going to say, yeah, Brian came and kind of swooped me up pretty early on in my days at Marvel. Um, I had just done, I think I was maybe like a year and a half into my professional comic career. Um, and I had done some like small press stuff at like Arkea and Top Cow. And I had just finished working on my kind of like tryout project at Marvel, which was Fantastic Four season one. And then Brian, this is where you have more details than I do, but I guess they were showing, they were using those season one books as, uh, like I was saying, like a tryout for a bunch of new talent. J Jamie McKelvey was another big find during uh, that period. Um, and I guess they were handing them around the office to the various folks looking for artists to work with and is that where you found me, Brian? Yeah, I mean that, that it's really what it is. Every once in a while, they and from from my memory, that wasn't the, the total reason for the year. The the, the year one book was supposed yeah, yeah. to be like you know, very reader friendly, like the ultimate books. Like here's if you need to know where to step in, step in here. And they had, they had ended up uh, hiring uh, people like yourself, who um, it's an early gig, but you clearly have the goods. But boy, what a gig to show off on! Like that, oh, that, yeah. that, that, class, yeah. that, that's definitely it's definitely one of those jobs where um, just just bring your thunder and wa watch your career explode. And um, every it, and and it was funny because it was like it wasn't what it was built for, but it's what it was becoming. And the minute that's what it became, CB started handing out like, "Hey, take a look at this, take a look at that," and also it it becomes that because you and Jamie and other people um, saw it as an opportunity to kick ass. Like if I blow the roof off this dump, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to let me, they're going to let me do some Marvel two in ones or something. And, uh, and uh, actually and, my next gig would have been something very much like that until. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. But I, and I, 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 I personally, get a lot of like like juice out of out of you know having that you know being there for when someone finds themselves uh, or or w wherever they are in their career when it's that next level time and you, you happen lot, to yeah. be there and see it and then can write into it and and it's it, and and cheerlead it on like it's going to happen regardless of my participation but if I can be, if I can be part of it, it's it's so exciting. And I literally just had that experience with Sarah, who was wonderful from the get go. But the minute we started working together, we were like, oh, something's going on here. Holy crap! Every page is better than the next. And then, um, uh, kind of addicted to that feeling, I like, you know, I was like telling like CB, hey, let me know if there's anybody else out there that's 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 percolating in the right way, right? Uh, and uh, and almost immediately, he sent me your stuff and i was like yeah this 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 guy this guy's got it and then um uh we started and started talking and it was like immediate it was just like everything yeah. fell into place quickly and just like sarah the work on miles was leaps and bounds ahead of where the fantastic four stuff was like almost immediately and i love the fantastic four stuff i still do i i, just, I lo absolutely loved it 
and uh, but was thinking what, what where where is he headed or where is he going and and that's and that's what we got and um, to, you know to this day you, it's it's funny like Peter Parker has uh, Ditko and Ramita Senior like as uh, and 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 Miles has Sarah and you no and I say this because much like. Peter Parker for many years, you would always see John Romita art when people just well, in, in the on the main stage of pop culture, you would often often see John Romita's interpretation of Spider-Man is what you saw on the on the seven up seven eleven cups and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So and and uh, almost since Spider-Verse, like before Spider-Verse, a lot of times the miles you see in like Rolling Stone or like any any like mainstream publication it's that it's you it's it's your miles yeah, yeah they showed like that, that, that i i am spider-man miles shot is is still seen almost all the time no and, and that shot exactly i remember seeing that on the daily show and being like oh yeah no that was that was a good one but it's my art that's cool yeah so so and and the and so we started taking the collaboration everywhere we could and, 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 you know, pushing and pulling each other in different directions and, and such. And it, it was just great. And, and, and then from there, we, we got offered Iron Man and we got offered a big giant event and, and we got offered, you know, um, defenders, which I absolutely adore. And, you know, it's unrelated to this, uh, conversation today. I last night at like five in the morning, as I'm winding down posted, uh, the awesome facial hair bros thing on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause somebody had posted it. Like what happens a lot of times fans post stuff on my, on my Twitter feed. And I go, Oh, that's a good, I'll post that. That's a good one. And, uh, and I posted it. I had to post it in a few years and I went to sleep. I woke up to 7,000 likes. <laughs> like I, wow. like I, to the point where I got, there were so many comments on it. I thought, there was something horrible going on. Right. Like like, that's how, there yeah. was like 66 comments and that's never good. Six, six, it's never good. Six good comments. And that actually was, it was, it was, uh, it was actually very nice. So it made me feel very warm and cozy about us yet again. And here we are talking. That's awesome. Nick Barucci joining us. Nick awesome. Barucci. Up, Nick? How about that? Very nice to see you, Nick. Absolutely. And he's Hi, just Nick. great to see uh, David for the first time. Very cool. I like that. Um, we're getting questions already, and uh, oh, okay. Uh, you, a, oh, there's comments. I'm sorry, I wasn't even looking. Oh yeah. So, how long do you plan ahead for your uh, stories for an ongoing book? I know the answer to this, but uh, tell everybody, Brian. Oh, it literally depends on the book. There are there. Are, uh, I used to plan way ahead, like way way ahead, and that's uh, uh, going back many years. Why Ultimate Spider-Man would often ship bi-weekly because we had the we had the books in house, so they just shipped them. Um, but that, and what was in, what was unique about that experience is that ultimate Spider-Man was kind of like its own little universe, even though I was sharing space with Mark, Mark and Brian were so the off schedule, not to, you know, not, it's many years ago and they've fixed it, but they, they were off schedule. So I couldn't relate or, or communicate with what was going on in their book right away all the time. So I just was plowing ahead and I didn't have any other continuity to worry about. So I could just do whatever the hell I wanted and not worry about what's going to happen in every other book a year from now. Uh, once I started on Avengers, I did the same thing for about a year and I realized, oh, I am wasting a huge amount of time planning past six months because I, I can't control, I can't, and nor should I be able to control the entirety of the Marvel universe is 50, 60 authors all throwing ideas into a pot and and my book has to reflect that sure not 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 just on some levels lead it but really uh, the the magic of a group book is that you reflect all the stuff that's going on uh, in all the other books right this is where iron man can come to his friends and go oh can you believe freaking extremists like you know like and deal with it so I, I i took it way down to as close to the bone as possible and i kind of realized you know, not unlike like a late night talk show, like the closer you're writing to deadline on some of this stuff, the better it will be. It'll be more up to date continuity wise. So so I, I would do that. So I went from a year ahead to how 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 up to the 
how up to the clutch can you get, you know, with that, without panicking everybody. Right. And, and, and still having a plan. So that, that, that's my very long answer. No, so everything, cool. everything's different. And there's creator own books that we write like, like that. And there's other books where, where uh, I have a book with Andre that I'm already on the second volume of, you don't even know what the first volume is. No one even knows what it is. So David, uh, did you guys develop a shorthand in terms of collaborating? Did it get, did it get uh, faster as far as, uh, you know, when you, when you get pages from Brian and kind of know what he's looking for? Yeah. I mean, one of the cool things about, about, the collaboration that Brian and I have had is from a very early stage working on Miles, I feel as if our, a lot of our storytelling instincts were the same. Um, and so Brian writes the way Brian writes and he even has a disclaimer beginning every script, um, especially to a new artist. You know, I write full script. This is just the way that my ideas come out of my head and go on the page, we kind of do what you want. Um, and very rarely would do I ever feel the need to deviate drastically from what's there um, because whatever the heart of what he's trying to communicate is something that comes pretty naturally to me as a storyteller. A lot of it's very much focused on the characters and what they're feeling in that moment. Um, and that's something like I've always just loved drawing faces or drawing expressions. And while it's far more than just that, that bit of it kind of always, always, um, kind of uh, resonates. But in terms of like shorthand, I mean, I feel as if Brian can anticipate really well for almost any artist he works with, kind of what they lean into up normally, as well as, and I've talk, spoken to this a lot, both with Brian and with you, John, before. Um, he's also very good at finding that one thing that like we don't want to do, but we need to work on. And <laughs> he'll, he'll always find a way of working that into the scripts. Um, <laughs> I always give him shit about, uh, about crowd scenes and stuff like that. But um, it's, uh, and as, as anyone who has read much of Brian's work knows, a lot of it takes place in the cities and outdoors. So, uh, but again, especially the last couple of years, I don't think I've written an indoor scene. Like I wrote an indoor and hall of justice scene and I realized it was the first like, interior i i word that i had written in like all this years. during COVID, huh i wonder what that yeah and i wonder what yeah. the connection is yeah <laughs> that's awesome all right a, a, a compound question from dante here uh dante says why did you guys bring back ultimate peter in the last story before merging with the 616 same with norman osborne i understand he was the main villain but i always thought it would be better to leave him dead how do you guys feel about comic deaths in general so start with peter and then talk about comic book deaths well, with Peter, um, I just felt they're going to bring him back regardless of us. So I'd rather do it myself. Um, and, and also I had a story to tell. Number one, it's a story to tell. Like there was sure. something, there, there was a, a story that I was scared of. That's usually what it goes. Like like the story that makes me go, oh, should I do that? I don't know. That's the thing they tell you not to do. And, and, and that makes me kind of want to see if I can, I can do it. Um, also, I, I tend to get very frustrated with other people that get too precious with their stuff. So I, I, and I, and when I do that in my heart, when I'm reading other people's stuff and I get frustrated with the preciousness in their work, I feel I'm talking up to myself about myself. Like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that, that person. I'm, I'm talking to, you're talking to yourself, but that's a little voice saying you're doing too precious. So I, I want to write the more dangerous story and bringing Peter and Norman back narratively was a more dangerous story, a more complicated, more, lot more, Oh, I don't know what will happen. I don't know if it'll work. So that's, that's the reason. And, and then, and then I think, Oh, they're definitely going to bring him, you know, the, the minute I leave this book, Donnie Cates is going to bring this character back. So I, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'll just do it myself. And uh, and for people who think I'm being paranoid about that, look, Donnie Cates is writing powers in his book. I, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't, he just he just takes my shit anyway. So um, um, yeah, so that 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 was the reason, and also the 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 fact that the Oz formula could be more than we thought it was, and it was separate from everything that was going on in the regular Marvel universe made it interesting to me too. So those, those are the big reasons. Yeah. It also is a nice kind of swan song for Peter as well. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. That that and also, yeah, we get it, it. And, and far as like deaths in comics goes, yeah, this is, this is, uh, I'm as guilty of this as anybody. And what you're really, 
what you get is you get your cake and eat it too. You get all the drama of the death and all the pathos and all the, uh, the real character meaning of it, right? And then you get the genuine enthusiasm of bringing back something beloved and and get the joy that we cannot get in the real in real world of of getting you know those happy reunions that never happen so a lot of us when we do this we know oh you're bringing so your resurrection could be bullshit it it, it can't it can't it, it's been done terribly I, we've all experienced it so when i'm faced with it i think about it a great deal like is this emotionally honest and again, it's got to be about the emotions of the of, of the moment. And if it's not emotionally honest, I, I I will I will back off. And David even knows there's been resurrections on the table where I at, at the end of the and then we got there and went, eh, it's bullshit. It is. It's it's bullshit. just bullshit. You can you can smell it. So in in this instance, you know, with Peter and Norman, they started with us. It's not bullshit. Anything we do isn't 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 bullshit. So. Anyway, and I missed him. I love Peter. Literally, he's an avatar of my high school years. I, I don't want him to go away. I like the little guy. Absolutely, man. Especially Ultimate Peter, no question. Yeah, David, absolutely. What, what are you drinking? Here's mine. I got uh, oh. I got Spendrift uh, as lime. This is my uh, Coke Zero. So ah, I am a ma man. Haven't they improved? I see a Brian natural water. God bless you, Brian. I had green tea earlier. I got the healthy out of the way. And oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. But I love new Coke Zero. I mean, because I liked it fine initially. They actually did make it better, and it really I, no, I agree. The it first tastes time like I Coke. Knew, <laughs> the first time I had the new formula, I was a little bit afraid of the new Coke kind of thing, which I'm sure for half the audience that's going to go right over their heads. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was a little bit hesitant, but you know, I'm down with it. I'm down with it. I'm with you, man. Hilarious. You're killing me. Um, I, I, I tapped out at Joel Cola when they stopped making <laughs> Joel Cola. I was out of there. Jolt, there's I know. No, there's no reason, Pepsi, man. Crystal Pepsi, that was the shit. Zima, let's all let's all relive <laughs> our '80s and '90s <laughs> memories. Absolutely, man. Uh, all right, here, here's a good one from David uh, for both of you. Any characters you have a hard time writing or drawing? Drawing, man. Um, I mean, one of the easy answers to give is there are a lot of characters and a tendency, I think, among my generation of comic artists and later to oftentimes overdesign the characters. Um, as the influence of like concept art and movies and video games has has worked its way, or is a cross pollination between the various media. Um, there's been a tendency to design costumes that are just incredibly complicated, and um, it's not that those designs aren't cool looking, but they're just a pain in the ass to draw and to keep consistent panel to panel. And you'll find, you know, I and certain other artists find ways of cheating of you know throwing things in shadow or just you know, fudging so we don't have to always draw in every single line. Now that said, like one of my biggest influences was Travis Charest in terms of art, who, as everyone knows, will you know spend five years drawing like a single figure in a character or, or on a page, and it's gorgeous, and no one can do it better than he can. But I'm trying to keep on a monthly schedule, and if that's my instinct with a really heavily designed character, it's like I can't get anything done. So, um, you know, Travis Charest kissed me once. That, I, you, you do know that actually. I think I'm envious. I don't know. No, he, I was in, I was in the middle of signing, and all of a sudden, someone like kissed like right here, like some a tall person came and kissed me right here. And then I looked up, and it was Travis Sharers, who I do not know. And he goes, "Oh, I'm sorry, you're not David Finch. I'm so sorry." And he walked away. That was a real story. That really That's awesome. That's outstanding. Yeah. Um, but there. the other, go on. But yeah, please, and then I'll get though is. I feel like I'm for there's certain characters that every time I draw them, I'm trying to figure out how to draw them in a different way. And Batman is one of those where I've ha I've been lucky that in my time at DC, I've gotten lots of opportunities to draw Batman. I feel like every issue, my version of Batman is changing a bit, and I haven't yeah. So like, are the ears back? Are they forward? It, it's there are all kinds of different considerations, and so I'm I'm usually pretty happy with the way he looks when I'm drawing him, but I'm also always trying to like reinvent it, which is a a funny thing with an iconic character like that. And all I hear from him and Darrington is this never ending conversation about the Batmobile. It's been going on literally. We walked in the door like 2018. It has not stopped. Well, Nick has opinions on everything. So. Yes. <laughs> well, Which Batmobile? I, that's great, though. I, yeah. I mean, and that's the beauty of it. I love seeing the different designs for the Batmobile over yeah. the years. That's that's wonderful. Uh, someone wanted, oh, here, Samuel wanted to know, um, is there a series or run 
that either of you have done that you're especially proud of? I'm proud of a lot of the work we've done together. Honestly. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to think of something I'm not genuinely proud of, including, um, so people know, David and I are currently working on our first Create Your Own project, which we have set up. And it's been, you know, slow cooking, but I- a Long um, time coming, yeah. It is something I'm deeply, deeply proud of. And Wonderful. Cannot, cannot wait to put out in the world. So that'll be next year sometime. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, so, so, so I, I'm as we, like, as we speak, creating something I'm very scared of and proud of with, with David that it, by far more than everything else we've done because it, it, it's, it's us and, uh, and that that's exciting. But I, I will say gun to head. I think David would be surprised how much I love the defenders. Honestly, that was my first instinct as well. It was oh, okay. That, That's like, good. No, no, it, it, it's funny because like it wasn't our most commercially successful book we've done together. Um, but I feel as if like it was something that and we can't talk about the project. I'll talk about Justin as well. Yeah. Um, I feel like all three of us really hit this, this synergistic level of just the the tone, the art, the color, the mood, the writing, like everything just really, really gelled. And yeah. I, yeah. I, cool. I just the energy of it, like it's it's like I I don't and like I was so satisfied with it. Mm. It was part of the reason I was ready to leave Marvel. Like I find like it, it that's how me, guys. that's how deeply it scratched the itch of all those characters, right? So we mentioned the design of the Batmobiles. Obviously, during your Iron Man run, David, you got mm -hmm. to kind of redesign Iron Man and give him a new a new suit and everything. And I loved I love that. Whole, uh, whole experience. So, uh, you know, talk talk about that run because again, I think that's that's one of my favorites, and that's why forgetting about Ultimate Spider Man, I'm like, oh god, you know, that's what I first think of when I think of you guys working together. That actually makes me really happy, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, Brian, you want to start? Oh, well, yeah. No, I, I. Well, we we got the offer, and um, it was like almost it, a year before we actually end up. It hit shelves. It was a really, really early. Yeah, we had time to percolate, which is great. Also, I had time to like work out my my Matt Fraction stress because yeah, people know Matt and I are very close, and I I find Matt's Iron Man run to be, you know, god tier. And I and you know, and also I'm such a showbiz whore. I'm like, you don't follow that. And uh, um, uh, but a couple of things kicked in, including Kieran's wonderful run, which offered, um, uh, he, had, you know, people think I did it, but um, uh, Kieran brought up Tony being adopted and his whole, the, the all, all the added levels to the Stark family kind of like laid it out for the next writer to pick up. And here I was in the early stages of being an adopted father and having, you know, being, have, it's such a big part of like, everything else I was doing in my life that was such an opportunity to work some of that out just to, you know, some of the, you know, it obviously has nothing to do with me or my daughters. It's like Tony's story is completely different, but there's a lot of adoption energy and stories in my life for years and years. A lot of people telling me stories about them. And I just, I just had a lot of truth I wanted to put into the character. And I was excited about it because what Kieran did was set up, Oh, we have a whole track of new story to tell that Matt couldn't even get a hold of, right? You know what I mean, like, uh, and all the other writers. But I'm focused on Matt. But, um, but, and and that that got very exciting because because I've been writing Iron Man since I walked in the door at Marvel. Like, there's there, there's not a month went by that I wasn't writing Iron Man. So when people ask when am I going to write Iron Man, I go, when am I not writing Iron Man? Uh, he's literally been in everything I, I've done, including Ultimate Spider Man. So um, it's just one of those characters I, I like Kitty Pride I, like would take with me uh, everywhere I went I, and um, for better or worse. And uh, um, so so to, to make an Iron Man statement that was bigger than the ones I had made in Illuminati or Avengers was 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 important. And, and Kieran set us up beautifully. So and, and also I had the. Um, you know, David didn't feel this, but I had the beautiful experience of having an equally excellent Iron Man experience with David and Alex at the same right. time. And they're completely different. Like, and they were, they were written different. They were like from different perspective. And that, that, that was really exciting. 
of all the weird multi-book things I've done, that 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 one artistically made me the most satisfied. So that's great to hear. No, absolutely, man. And yeah, I don't know, David, if you want to any any yeah. any thoughts in terms of designing the armor, or again, uh, just the run in general. Yeah. No. I mean, so when Brian first brought up the possibility of you know he'd been offered Iron Man, he was thinking about it, what what the shape of the of the book would look like, um, and. He asked if I would want to draw it. I wasn't sure. Like, it wasn't a character that I had had a huge attachment to before. Okay. Um, but the challenge, and again, Brian, he, he knows how to do this. He will find a way, like, getting a project's hooks into you, kind of. And so getting a chance to kind of redesign and rethink the way that, that, that it works because um, – a lot of, of the specific elements of what the armor does, it can transform, it can fly, it can shoot. These have all kind of been done a lot. Um, we're trying to find a new and unique, unique way of, of, of portraying that is always a really fun challenge for an artist. And something that Brian, I think, probably picked up uh, about me from working on all the Ultimate stuff is how much I love doing design work. Yeah, he does. Um, yeah. And there are certainly other artists, I, I think, who do it better than I do, but I still really love it. Um, and so he, he and Tom Brayboard, who was the editor on the book, really kind of challenged me to try to find a way of making the armor look unique, but also very much, you know, honor like the the, the iconic nature of, of Iron Man's design. Um, so and, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, um, like a guy like Mike Grello, when he did it, it was interesting, but I, I didn't, you know, I never liked that white, red color scheme i loved that you know again you stuck with the classic colors you can't deny it's iron man but again you gave it this new look and and i mean god i, I even loved i didn't put it up to uh put on screen here but your process pages or even just your oh. character sketches and stuff i mean these are these are great things that's why I'm, I'm kind of not surprised when people go to your uh cadence uh page to buy art the only thing that i saw up there from iron man was a reaction oh, shot of uh, Doctor. Look him looking at Doctor Doom, and uh, yeah. am I right? It's Victor. It's clean face. Yeah, man. yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah. So I think all most of my miles and Iron Man stuff at this point is gone. So uh, it's um, I've got some. Yeah, but... you do. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> D David. David's good like that. By the way, uh, up and coming artist, bequeath a page to your collaborator every once in a while. It, it means the world to them. I know and there's not much physical art left, but if you have it, it's it's a uh, no one will appreciate owning it more than the person that made it with you. So was it during your run too, David, that you had the black and gold armor as well? The black and uh, there, there's a stealth version of it as well. Yeah. And I okay. don't have them around here. But they made toys. And in the way these huge corporate behemoths work, we don't always get copies of them. But I, I bought copies what? of them myself and for, yeah, well, these like, you know, the, it's the Hasbro built toys or whatever. It's, I don't know what the licensing deals are, or who has control. Anyways, long story short is I bought Brian a copy of it. So, so <laughs> wherever that toy is buried away somewhere, I got it for you. Uh, but, that's yeah, awesome. I'm glad that not only, you know, you guys doing the creator own stuff together, but of course, uh, you know, he, when he when he went to DC and stuff, he he wanted to do on Justice League, and I mean, you know, here's a great cover, you know. Yeah, uh, he, he did amazing work on Justice League. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, right from day one, you know, the initial the initial first issues and stuff. You know, I saw Brian. Um, someone made a comment about Naomi being on the team, and like, I don't get that. Want to and and I want to give you the opportunity to kind of explain why you wanted to put Naomi on the Justice League. <laughs> no, no, no. There, there was a real story reason, and and. Yeah. Um, I and and there, there's a history here, like an Amy group franchise. There is a a character that 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 um, is brought on to the team and uh, has to earn their 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 space there on the yeah. team. And there's a reason the other teammates and and they made it very clear she's a powerhouse level power. Let's let's let us let us just let's just train her right now. Let's just Absolutely. not wait. And, and also, I, and uh, the way the DC and I really gave this like way more thought. It, 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 the way the DC universe has been acting the last few years, and I, I, I'll give it um, um, 
the way Scott Snyder had things rolling, there was almost constant crisis. So when someone shows up and goes, I've got giant superpowers, like, why don't you stay here with us? <laughs> and we'll, uh, and we'll, you know, and we'll, you know, uh, help you through this and mentor and everything. Um, and also like, and everyone's like, put on the Teen Titans. I'm like, yeah, they're doing something else. That's a different, that's a, that's a different thing. So all of it was thought through and everything. And so yeah. on top of, um, boy, the, wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be terrifying for her, right? Like, it, it's right. like, what kind of story are we getting out of? And also you get, um, and it's great for any of these franchises to have a new teammate come on who has no history with the rest of the group, right? Because it's they're like a rock band. They've all known each other. They've all been on tour. They all know each other's, you know, they some of them like actually finish each other's sentences, especially in my book. So why wouldn't um, uh, having a new character come on allows perspective, allows someone to go, holy shit, the Hall of Justice is pretty amazing. Where's the bathroom? I don't know where it is, right? And uh, well, how do you guys eat? Like all of these, yeah. so someone asking the questions that some new reader may want to know, and even a classic reader go, yeah, where is the bathroom? Um, that, like that, that may be interesting, but there's someone there who can ask questions that haven't been asked before and challenge things that haven't been challenged before. And um, I, and this, I, I had a similar, and even, it doesn't have to be a brand new character. It could just be a new character to the environment. I mean, this is, I had a similar thing with Luke Cage on, uh, on Avengers. He's just never been in that environment before. So his perspective was different than everybody else's. And, uh, and, and, and I, and I like doing it without, you know, repeating that energy. So I'm with you, man. No. And that's yeah. the same kind of vibe that, uh, Jeff Johns and James Robinson were doing on JSA when they had star girl and, and the young steel and, going and back to the sixties. I doubt you can pick a run that hasn't featured a character like this, um, Hawkeye, Hawkeye, Hawkeye. Or the, a cap and his, uh, you know, yeah. when it was Scarlet witch and, uh, and silver and, uh, Quicksilver. Yeah. Yeah. But also, do know, I'm a lifelong fan. I've experienced all the ups and downs of choices like this. So when one is made, I'm not blind to the to the to the negative connotation too. Like, oh, he's just taking it's a Justice League of Mary Sue's. And I, like, and it's not so. So knowing that, I, I I way before anyone hears about any of this, uh, these choices have been made. Can do I think? This I can prove myself to Twitter, like can to can to, <laughs> well, you can can I it's like no I there's a, there's little Twitter voices in my head well 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 is and I appreciate those voices I do like because okay. like yeah I don't want you to look at this and go bullshit I want you to look at it and go oh yeah you proved me wrong or or oh good it's okay. the good version and so so I think about that before we 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 put any of this um, in front of you there you go so, yeah okay. and also. Yeah. yeah, and yes, like when they called me and said um, the the only like 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 they said, hey, Black Adam, if like is that someone you'd want? And I went, oh, and then if I went, they they would they, the Black Adam would be somewhere else. Like they they wouldn't force me to do it, right? But they said, hey, obviously Black Adam's going to be a thing. Is that and you know they did that at Marvel too. Like is it? Huh. And if I if I had a a real connection to it or was or, or was interested, I would I would grab it happily, right? Or or not. So with the when they offered Black Adam, you can't help but think, well, now he's got a TV show coming too, right? Like you know, that's the let's let's do that. And and also we you know we flashing all the way back to you know Guardians of the Galaxy. The whole the whole point of our run on Guardians was to like get people ready you know, for what's coming uh, in other media. And so to, to do this here, to have Naomi interacting with the whole DC universe and Justice League will make, you know, whatever happens on the CW all that more interesting, hopefully. And I've seen the pilot and I'm excited for people to see the show. That's cool. I uh, I want to show some of these other covers that David has yeah, please. in his uh, in his gallery and stuff that people should see. I love this. I mean, it's, uh, it's from uh, Scott's whole... Uh, you know, uh, dark crossover and stuff. Mm. And here's the alternate universe, evil Barry Allen, uh, grave flashpoint kind of moment. I love that. That's, that's yeah, outstanding. Are, yeah. They've, uh, DC has asked me to, or offered me a number of kind of fun cover, cover runs. These dark multiverse tales from dark multiverse covers were a lot of fun. Just playing with mythology, 
that, you know, goes back to when I was first getting into comics um, and then putting a nice kind of fun, dark twist on it. Absolutely, man. Great classic Wolverine cover here. Uh, yeah. Love that. That's beautiful. Again, all this stuff is available over at uh, David's art page and stuff. So uh, that's... Yeah, unfortunately, that's cool. I, I, uh, I work digitally. I, unfortunately. I do it because I like drawing that way. and It's fun and it's fast. Um, so there, I don't have nearly the same uh, inventory, I suppose, of, of original art that a lot of <clears throat> a lot of artists do. Um, but when I do end up taking the time to do a traditional piece, it's because either A, I want to play with ink that day, or more often, like, this is going to be a special piece. I want to spend some time with it. That's or actually... you're pretty sure you can sell it. <laughs> sure, why not? Gone, absolutely. So, yeah. No, absolutely, man. That's that's fantastic. I'm really, I can't wait to hear about whatever your creator-owned uh, collaboration is going to be, guys. I think that's wonderful. it's It's early, and we have projects coming out before that, but when we, we will be here with you on Word Balloon talking about it. We absolutely. My guys. It could be the whole history, the yeah. whole the whole thing. Saying that's uh, it, truly, guys, uh, that means a lot, honestly. That you no, guys, of course. Of not course. only that you come on, that you guys come back. It, it's, it, it, uh, as always, that, that, that really is nice, and I, I'll start crying if I talk more about Aww. this. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, man, all right, uh, Brian, you got uh, Joy Operations getting started. Uh, has, has the first issue dropped? Forgive me. No, it, it dropped. No, you would you would have it in your hands if it, it dropped. No, it'll be out uh, end of November. Um, uh, I'm hearing at the moment no supply chain issue effect. I think we bumped a week for it. So that, that was it for that. So um, I'm also happy to report that uh, for those who pre-ordered, which I am deeply grateful, um, issue two is already at the printer on time. Shipping on time, on time, on time ship. So is it going um, to be November thirtieth or before the twenty third? When twenty, uh, I don't know what days, whatever. Well, I don't know. Twenty sixth, twenty eighth. I think it was by, a twenty I'm, in there. I'm bringing up the calendar to make sure I get the day right. It's, it's literally all over my Instagram. So uh, whatever it says there. Well, it'd be the, probably the twenty fourth for a Wednesday, uh, not to be confused with the DC, uh, you know, days. So either mm. the seventeenth uh, or the twenty fourth, I'm assuming. Yeah, so that's cool. I, I I do like being back on Wednesdays. The Tuesday threw me. I'm I'm too old for that. I can't do that after like decades of being on a Wednesday. And I'm psyched so, for uh, whatever surprises you've got with the the Gold Lantern. I've uh, been seeing the uh, stories about that, so that's going to be interesting. Your yeah, I am too like crossover. Yeah, it's um, Justice League Legion of Superheroes. It's a return of the Legion of Superheroes, which I'm very excited about. And um, it's me and Scott Godlewski who did Young Justice together. And Ryan Cody, who is the colorist of Family Trees with uh, Jeff Lemire and uh, Phil Hester, yep. and quite a beautiful team we put together. And uh, you know, I, I posted some art um, yesterday. Every time, I always feel guilt. Like and David was joking about me in the crowd scenes, but you know, it's uh, like a crowd scene can be. But you know, what's really guilt? A uh, 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 Justice League Legion of Superheroes crowd scene is that that's guilt inducing. That's a that's a lot. That's a lot. There's a lot of people standing on stage with their arms on their hips. And uh, um, I, I, and I, the art is so beautiful. And when you see someone like Scott, like David does, who can give every single character personality in the spread, uh, it, it's uh, George Perez like it's, it's quite, it's quite something. So I'm excited for everyone to see it. That's cool. Dante has an interesting question. And I don't know if either of you have, the right to say when the, uh, there's a need for a fill-in artist uh, who comes in, are you are you guys able to call and say, "Hey, we want that guy"? Either of you? Uh, it's usually a bit of a conversation, although I mean, it depends on the needs of the book. Why is there a fill-in? All this kind of stuff. Sure, um, but absolutely, you know, whenever um, uh, the 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 most recent example is originally the plan was for me to stay on Justice League longer than than I. I did. I was going to come back um, and things, schedules change. And so I know, buddy. Um, but yeah, so even then, you know, Brian and I had talked about and tossed names around. Um, and as Brian was alluding to earlier about the desire to want you to find people who are kind of just about to blow up. Um, I know that's usually a big part of, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, that's a big part of, of what you often look for sort of an opportunity for someone to bring in uh, uh to be fair i'm 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 of two minds of this uh, yeah. and um and david's right there's two two different kinds of fill-in there's the emergency fill-in oh shit, the wheels are off the wagon 
um, which uh, many great careers have been made during times like this, where someone comes in and saves the day, and now you know who they are. Yeah. Um, and there's other times where it's a planned break, and a planned break is a little different. That's there's there's uh, obviously a lot less panic involved. There's planning. You can get someone special to come in, and in those uh, areas. Uh, and I, I think Legion of Superheroes would be, it was all, we, we knew what Ryan could and couldn't do. So everything was planned around that to keep him on the book as long as possible. And so in that instance, it would be like, okay, who's the best name available? Let's go shopping. And it's not, it's not just, um, and I do, I do, I, 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 and sometimes it's, it's a whimsical feel where you're like, I, I was like, who's out there? Who's, who's about to pop? Like who's, who? Who 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 um who would who would benefit from this gig, like you know and uh, and by the way, Legion of Superheroes not necessarily a gig a lot of people would benefit from. It could kill them, right? It could like oh well, that yeah. was that was that was a comics uh, was fun, but I'm out. Yeah, uh, um uh and and also a, a grand opportunity for me to work with someone I admire uh, a great deal, right? Uh, ooh, we were doing this Warlord section. Is Mike Grell available? Yes, he is. I could work with Mike Grell on Warlord. Wow. So, wow. so stuff like that um, uh, uh, can happen. So, if you plan ahead of time, you can make these fill-ins or these breaks um, an artistic statement and um, and a celebration of comics. And I, I really do uh, look at these all, all of these opportunities as that because I we've all as fans experienced when like, well, that fill-in was. Goddamn amazing, right? It, 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 and also we've, and I grew up, I think, because of my age, and, and John, you've had this too, where you, you open up a book and the cover says one thing and you open it up and the, the book is something else. Womp, womp. And, and you can tell from the, the, <laughs> the, the, the rushed things to the last 10 pages that this thing barely got out the door. And so I try with every fiber of my being to make sure that we're never in that situation as much as I possibly can. Obviously I can't control every, every aspect of the assembly line, but by doing everything I can right on my end, I can, I can, I can keep, I can keep the wheels off on the wagon as, as long as I can. So that, that's something I, I, I take real seriously. And I, I've, I trying to think how many actual fill-ins I've actually had in my career, like actually like, Oh shit, we got to get a fill-in. And it's, it's, it's very low. Okay. Very, very low. Like literally there was like one time an artist on Daredevil physically disappeared. Like no one could find, like that was like, where, this. where's this person? Like, yeah. 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 So like stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. David, are you mostly doing covers right now? Or are you doing interiors? Forget um, it. I've been doing some covers. I do have a project at DC that hasn't been announced yet. And um, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big deal when it comes out. It, it, it's, 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 it's so good that covering. when he called me and said, I got a bail on Justice League. Because of this, I went, of course you do. God bless. That's great. That's yeah. excellent, man. And yeah. Brian, uh, loving you and Alex Maleev on uh, Checkmate. Great mystery and uh, a uh, really interesting group. I am too. I'm, Justice League group. I'm thrilled that Checkmate was released. I'm glad it, it made it out the door. It was part of a publishing program that doesn't exist. So I'm I'm uh, uh, goddamn delighted to, to see it come out. Um what Alex and I have planned next is I'm so excited. I, I, I could burst like we do. And it's kind of fresh. Like we just like last week kind of committed. We got it to a place where like, all right, we're doing it. Let's do it right now. Cool. So we're, we we're committed to what our next book is and it's ambitious and scary and, and, and leans right into, if you look in what Alex has been doing lately on Twitter, his kind of a new painting style, um, and and it's been very in inspiring to me. So that's that's going to be the 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 voice around what we do next. That's excellent, man. And yeah. obviously, we're all excited for uh, the coming new seasons of a lot of existing Jinx World stuff, and also new Jinx World stuff coming as well. Yep. Pearl um, just got Pearl pages this morning from Gatos. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, David Mack is hard at work on cover and the cover pilot for HBO Max. We're, yeah. working, we're working on that uh, literally yesterday. I, I, I can't tell you what a weird week it was here. It, and um, and so, uh, and though Alex and I are not going to continue Scarlet, we're going to do a brand new thing. Okay. And uh, Dave, uh, and then Mike Taki and I have a new um, volume of. Uh, 
um, previously titled United States of Murder, Inc., now just called Murder, Inc., colon, something. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, because it, it ended up, when we came up with the title many years ago, we thought the pile of marketing negatives uh, would make an interesting, captivating title. But it ends up, it's just a pile of marketing negatives. Most of the world, not into the United States, not into murder or corporations. All of these things are, put them all together. Anyway, so so it's a book that we are deeply proud of. I mean, really proud of. I could spend all day there. And I love them. I love these characters so much. So we're, we're going to re-put out the entire line of... Um, United States of Murder Inc. graphic novel novels through Dark Horse under the title Murder Inc. Colon Valentine's Trust and then other titles. Fair enough. And uh, Dante, that answers your question. Yes, Jinx World's uh, imprint has moved to Dark Horse. Yes. So, so uh, we look for look for the new stuff and the old stuff under the Dark Horse logo. I don't know. Yeah, if and, and uh, you announced where your creator own thing is going to be. Well, where so most of my stuff will be at Dark Horse. Dark Horse is is uh, my home, and my hat is hung there. And um, every once in a while, there's going to be a project that 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 fits another mold. I think if people have been really paying attention, what's going on, I and mean, even just if you're just casual, go to Barnes and Noble and look at the graphic novel section. I think you'll see um, a, a difference. The, the market has changed a great deal. And it's it's absolutely for the better. It's absolutely fascinating. I could not have guessed it 10 years ago, yeah. but um, the, uh, let's call it the YA market, the, the Reina Captain Underpants market is um, bigger than the superhero market. And um, it has now created uh, basically a, a scenario. We have three different markets with Marvel and DC has a market and then the image dark horse boom, uh, let's call it creator own and enhanced genre market for, for adults uh, and for kids too. But like, but, but 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 people eagerly seeking the next thing, that's where they go. One hundred percent non superhero. Yes, keep, keep yeah. Going. And then and then there's the but all all like crime and science fiction and it's all all all, all very mainstream genre, ideas. Premium indie. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then there's the 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 Reina space, I'm, I'm, and I know yeah. she doesn't own it directly, but she created it, and everyone else's rant run into the door she burst open, and uh, and that's the YA market, and uh, and that YA market has, has created um, quite a lot of opportunity uh, for those of us who were uh, creating YA content accidentally. Yes. So. Um, yes. So, um, so there will be opportunity sometimes where we ha we have books outside the dark horse um, the machine uh, because we're just interested in seeing what happens in these other markets and 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 trying it out because it's scary. But yeah, so mostly dark horse, and then every once in a while something else somewhere else. That's fine, uh, and I don't blame you. Um, Dante asks. Uh, you know, um, and and I guess a good example. Of Dante, this, you are killing it with the questions today, man. These good are good questions. questions. Yeah, I, I well, this one real fast. Are you interested in doing original graphic novels instead of single issues? And we think of what Drew Baker's been doing, obviously, in that space. Well, as I've said on on this podcast for many years, I, I think I, I learned early on at Caliber when I was at Caliber uh, Press in the '90s, and Ed Blue Baker left. We were the, we broke in the same day, and then a couple years later, Ed just took off Ed just bailed and i went where'd ed go and then and then caliber like fell apart like 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 a like a disaster <laughs> movie and but ed saw it coming so ever since then every time ed leaves the room i i i i i i i, I, I pay a lot of attention to like what, what what what's going on but um jokes aside um uh uh Ed's pivot to graphic novels was an exceptional idea for him and his craft. And then, um, obviously, he'd invent graphic novels, but the, 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 this idea, this, this, this changing how he, he worked um, was an amazing idea. And then we did it on Powers, like specifically went, all right, let's, let's do one. Just like they did, we we have a we have a franchise, and we can we can we can try this, and yeah. it was the most satisfying experience. 
I mean, David knows me and Mike would not shut up about it. We're like, all right, guys, it's power. You've been 20 years. I'm like, but this, there was some next level experience. And when the book came out, it came out in the, in the darkest days of the pandemic and sold out, which was amazing. And, um, um, I, I was stunned by the by the the how it felt like the, like we get it every week every Wednesday I get I get interaction with people I, about reading stuff all the different interactions but this one felt like on some deeper level and even though I have people reading trades and everything I have people reading collections all the time and particularly during uh, COVID we had people reading whole runs of our stuff and like reading like every every issue at, at once which is not what they were made for but amazing that it held up and. Um, I don't know. It was just putting out powers as a graphic novel was the most satisfying. And so, yes, there will be more. I just absolutely loved it. Cool. David, the, I book, the book I'm doing with Andre will come out as, as a graphic novel for sure. Oh, very good. Yeah. yeah. David, I don't know how you feel about OGNs versus monthly. Yeah. I mean, as I have, I guess, matured as, as, as a, as no longer just like a rookie comic artist, um, I've gotten a bit slower and the churn of working on a monthly book, uh, for an artist, especially one that like likes to be fairly detail oriented, like can be a real strain. And so I like just from a scheduling perspective, I like the idea of doing a concrete chunk. And an OG is a great fit. OGN is a great fit for that. And I've done a number of OGNs over the years. I mean, you have. FF season one was an OGN. Also, just to plug uh, one of my older creator owned projects, uh, the Joiners in 3D was an OGN. Yes, it was, um, and it was so, a great yeah, one. Still on Amazon, guys. You can go. You can go. Go get Fantastic it. Fantastic um, 3D book, everybody. Really, I really agree. Great. Thank you. Brian Absolutely. blurred it. Thank you. I did. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I definitely like the idea of kind of producing a statement. Here it is, you yeah. know, um, yeah. and not feeling as if, as if, not that this is always what it is, but the worst version of what a monthly book can be is you're feeling just like a cog in a machine. You're just, you're filling in a slot on the schedule. And I've been fortunate that hasn't been much of my experience doing, doing monthlies, but I feel like with an OGN, it really ends up becoming more of a, like I said before, it's a statement usually between either you and the other creators or if it's just one person doing the entire thing. Very cool. Yeah. I'm letting people know that sadly we have to wrap up oh. because I've got to get ready for Jamal Eigel at the top of the hour. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Tell, yeah. Me. Awesome. Tell me. Tell me. Absolutely. And great seeing you guys. I look forward to seeing you guys in person eventually. Uh, but thank God we do. Guy, can you imagine if this was the 80s and we wouldn't even have online and we'd have to call each other and uh, <laughs> i can't imagine the mindset so thankfully at least we got video and i just be see. watching 120 minutes and ignoring the world that would be what I, would <laughs> I missed that show that was a great great alternative rock show on mtv back in the day it, it's it's a, as an adult father with an almost adult child it's amazing what comes out of my mouth as an old man when I was a kid, 120 minutes. I, I literally, it's amazing how my old madness manifests itself. Understood. Understood. Yeah. All right. So there again, it's at the top of the chat and it's on the crawl right there. That's where you can go to buy Dave's uh, art at uh, Cadence Comic Art. Please check that out. Uh, both of you will be back, I would imagine. Uh, Brian and I will be talking more about Joy Operations uh, in a few weeks. Yeah, we're... David, we're Go we're going to do, uh, uh, you and I, we're going to do something like this, what with Stephen Byrne, um, talking about craft and all that. And I'm, I'm excited to introduce you to him. And uh, for those who ask questions uh, uh, who didn't get answered, um, um, head on over to my uh, Substack newsletter. We're doing a big Q&A there, and I'm going to do an all Q&A newsletter next week. So I, I don't want to... Uh, um, uh, miss any of your questions and I'm happy to answer them. Also, if you don't know, I have a Substack newsletter and it answers a lot of questions and uh, debuts a lot of art like the second I get it. So um, sign up for that because there's going to be a lot of um, uh, updates and also um, some surprise announcements coming in the next few weeks. Sounds great. All Maybe right. Anything coming up? Uh, I'm just waiting for DC to announce the book, man. And then, okay, buddy. like I said, Brian and I are just trucking away on on this thing we're doing, and I can't wait to start showing off all the stuff that no one has seen. Well, David both. has David's in that beautiful sweet spot. He's got an amazing mainstream book coming, and 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 a and a deeply personal creator own book. Uh, both both on the on the drawing table at the same time. They, I I don't I, I just I don't think there's any better way to make spend your time in comics. So great to hear. That's fantastic, guys. Thank you very much for doing this today. You're both thanks, John. 
Come and thank you to everyone for time. spending spending time in the on the chat with yeah, us. That was very everyone. cool. I didn't Great know people were going to be here. Everybody. That's very nice. Thank you very much. All right, everybody, take care. Follow me and Jamal and another uh, page of the Word Balloon YouTube or uh, Comic Card Live. But thanks for being with us, everybody, and uh, everyone.